In this video, we'll create a multicolored mushroom scene. We'll be depending on features added in RayTK version 0.26, so make sure to use at least that version. Check the video description for a download link. Drop the toolkit talks into your project. Open the palette using the Alt-R shortcut. Create a Ray March Render 3D or you can use the shortcut RR3, and then add a null top so that you can see the output. I'm going to set the resolution to 1800 by 1400 so that it fits in this preview panel, but feel free to use whatever resolution you want. With the renderer selected, use the Alt-Shift-R shortcut to open the RayTK Editor Tools menu. Choose Add Look At Camera. On the camera, set the position to 0, 4, and 10, and then keep the FOV angle at its default setting of 45. We aren't going to be using lighting in the final version of the scene, so we can just use the default built-in light to start. Before we continue, we should address a bug that you may be encountering if you're using Touch Designer in version 2022.26590 or earlier. If you're using the normal parameter dialog in the network editor, you may notice that it gets very wide. And if you try to resize it, it will just expand until it fills the entire editor. This is a bug in Touch Designer, which is set to be fixed in their next release. It's related to the way that RayTK hides extra built-in parameters. For now, there's a workaround. Create a text dat and enter the following code. For O in ops, parentheses, quote, star, quote, parentheses, colon, tab, if, o dot is comp, colon, and a new line, another tab, o dot show custom only equals false. Then you can right click it and choose run script. Now, if you look at the parameters for any RayTK operator, you'll be able to resize the parameter panel down to a reasonable size, and as you select different operators, it won't continuously expand. This will fix any operators that are already in the network, but it doesn't automatically fix new ones that you add using the palette, so you may need to run it again as you're working. An alternative is to set up a separate parameters pane, like I've done here, but we won't be covering that in this tutorial. Now back to our scene. This scene is going to be based on a box with a bunch of transformations applied to it. Open the palette again and create a box SDF, and then connect that to the first input on the renderer. Open the palette again and create an iterated transform. And then insert that between the box and the renderer. This will apply a transformation and then apply reflection and then repeat the process again. Try adjusting the rotate parameters. And set the rotation to eight and 200, and then 10. Next, we'll add some translation to move everything apart at each step. On the y-axis, set the translation to 0 0.2, then increase the iterations to 10. On the camera, increase the FOV angle to 60 to get a wider view of the scene. You want to get some sort of smooth continuous motion in here, 
without changing the overall structure. If we change the rotation setting on the iterated transform, it will move everything, reshaping the whole thing. Instead, if we rotate the box before the iterated transform, it can spin continuously without changing the overall shape. Insert a rotate operator between the box SDF and the iterated transform. Try adjusting each part of the rotation and see how it impacts the final result. But it doesn't change the overall structure. Now we'll add some animation. Select the rotate and open the editor tools menu. Under Animate with Speed, choose Rotate XYZ. This will create a speed generator and connect all three rotation parameters to it. Now it doesn't look like it's doing much, and that's because we're dealing with rotation, which is in degrees, so we need fairly large values. On the speed generator, set the value multiplier to 30 for all three axes. Then we can adjust the speed setting separately for each axis. I'm going to use 1, negative 0.5, and 0.2, but feel free to use whatever settings you want. You can then use the speed multiplier to adjust all of the speeds at the same time. I'm going to set that down to 0.5 to keep things fairly slow. Now we've got some fairly rough edges in our final output here. So to smooth that out, we're going to create a round operator and insert that between the transform and the renderer. We can then increase the round setting which will expand the surface and also round it. So set that to something like 0.2, and that will smooth out some of those hard edges. Next, we'll add some twisting to the overall shape. We could do this with a twist operator, but it only twists continuously in a single direction. Instead, we can use a rotate a field that controls the amount of rotation. Create a rotate operator and insert that between the round and the renderer. Set the rotate mode to axis, which instead of rotating each axis in sequence, will do a single rotation around one axis. By default, it's set to use the y-axis, which is what we want, so we can keep that as it is. Create a wave field and connect that to the second input, the rotate field input on the rotate operator. Now again, we're dealing with angles here, so we want larger values. So increase the amplitude to around 20. Then set the axis to Y. That gives us a twist in effect, but it's much too dense. So increase the period up to four, which will spread it out a bit. Now, if you adjust the phase, you'll get a continuous smooth motion going back and forth. Select the wave field and open the editor tools menu, and then under animate with speed, choose phase. And I'm just gonna move that up here. Then on the speed generator, we can slow that down using the speed multiplier to around 0.1. Now that we've set up our shape and added animation, we'll work on the material. We'll be using a new operator added in 0.26 called Iridescence Control. Create a modular map and insert that between the rotate and the renderer.
it will go dark. And that's because we haven't added any shading elements yet. Normally, we would add some combination of diffuse and specular shading, but not for this scene. Instead, we're going to use iridescence. Open the palette and create an iridescence contrib operator. And then connect that to the second input on the material. It's worth noting that you can also use iridescence in combination with traditional shading, but for this scene, we're just going to be using it on its own. This operator ignores lighting entirely and uses only the surface normal relative to where it's being viewed from. It isn't a totally accurate representation of physical iridescence, but it does still give us some interesting results. Try moving the camera side to side, and you'll see how it's moving the colors so that they're always around the sides where the surface is facing away from the camera. It varies the hue of the color based on the angle of the surface relative to where the camera is. Now for comparison, let's take a look at what this looks like for a sphere. So create a sphere SDF, and then connect that to the material instead of the rotate. Then increase the sphere radius to two. Note how it only shows up on the edges since those are facing away from the camera the most. You can adjust the phase and see how it rotates the colors around those angles. When you're done, switch back to the original SDF. You may notice how some of the edges are getting a bit staticky. To address this, we can smooth out the surface normals a bit. On the renderer, go to the settings page and then switch on enable normal smoothing. And we can increase that normal smoothing to somewhere around uh, 0. 0 0.02. And note how that smooths out some of those rough patches. You could increase it higher, but at some point it starts to obscure some of the surface details, although that could be its own interesting effect. This doesn't always solve this sort of issue, but it's worth trying if you're getting rough edges in a renderer. And that's it for our scene. To recap, we're starting with a box SDF, then we are spinning it continuously with a rotate, animated with a speed generator, and then we're using an iterate transform, which is shifting and rotating and reflecting it repeatedly. Then we are applying some rounding to smooth out some of the roughness. And then we're applying a twisting effect using a rotate controlled by a wave field along the y-axis, which is then animated with the speed generator. We're then using iridescence contrib and a modular material to provide the coloring. And then finally, on the renderer, we are using normal smoothing to further smooth out some of those rough edges. Some other things to try include animating the phase on the iridescence, or changing the rotation on the iterate transform, or starting with a different base shape. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more RayTK tutorials. Check out my Patreon for access to scene files, exclusive tutorials, and more. Thanks for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe.